a really important ceremony. So maybe one of the biggest rituals, you know, that we'll have mm -hmm. besides going the other direction. And I do that too. A lot of people think Erica Badu can be a little scary, especially when she's talking about what she does when she's not singing. Now imagine what type of person it would take to give someone like her the chills. You're a beautiful woman and you're a woman. You have about two minutes of depression that happens in the body. Really? Yeah, you get depressed a little bit for about a couple of minutes. Turns out the person that made her feel that way might have been Kidata Jones, and that wasn't all she made Erica feel. Who has Erica Badu ever compared herself to? Because you were one of one. I am one of one. But you don't always know that. You know, we don't always know that. It depends on how we're feeling. In general, the entertainment industry is filled with two kinds of people, the regular celebrities and the others that have strangeness about them. Many of our biggest stars fall into the first category, as their lives are pretty clear-cut to their fans. But then, there are other less straightforward celebrities that fans believe to be unnatural, and rightfully so because largely very little is known about their personal lives. Erica Badu happens to fall into the second category, with most people on social media even believing her to be the height of the unorthodox in the industry. So when this person who everybody might already be conscious of says there's someone out there that might send chills down her spine, you agree that it's a big deal, right? Well, it seems the person that our weirdest celebrity might be weary of is Kidata Jones. The problem here is that many people don't know exactly who Jones is, let alone why Badu would be worried about her. Just to give you a quick rundown, Jones might actually be more grounded in the entertainment industry than Badu, not as a musician like Badu, but as someone in the performing arts. How she gets her musical grounding, however, is from her dad, Quincy Jones, who many know as the godfather of music today. Now, outside of both of them being successful in their individual lines of work in the industry, the only other thing Kidada and Erica have in common is that both of them are known for their involvement in the supernatural. Although Erica has already made it known that she follows that path, Kidada seems to have managed to keep hers in the shadows over the years. However, finding out that Kidada is a fruit from Quincy Jones's tree has made it much easier to understand how she might have been invested in the paranormal. After all, Papa Jones himself is no stranger to speculations bordering on the unusual himself. Regardless of her father's name being mentioned here, the mere fact that she's coming up in a conversation with Erica Badu, and more so that the conversation is on her being the only person Erica might be scared of, might become the biggest deal on the internet soon. While many fans have been talking about these women's individual reputations in the spiritual realm, naming events through the years that formed these reputations, no one has actually ever jammed them up in the same conversation. Until now, that is. It turns out that there might be a deeper reason why this path has never been explored, as it seems to be why talks on Erica's fears are now making the rounds. How do you describe it? What, my power? Yeah. Uh, I think it's indescribable. It may not seem like it to many people because of the hyper-focus on her personal life, but Erika Badu is a lot more than just the spiritually enlightened image of her that's in the media. Known for her singles You Got Me, her collaboration with The Roots, as well as her own songs Tyrone, Love of My Life, Honey and Soldier, among others, Erica has been busy inside and outside the studio. Her lyrics are highly personal urban philosophy, which throws emotional challenges in the face of the listener. She weaves unusual musical influences together, creating a rich texture of sound. Some music journalists have labeled her New Soul, Nouvelle Soul, or Neo Soul, often comparing her to Billie Holiday in lyrical delivery and grouping her with Maxwell and D'Angelo in the musical genre. Badu received notice for her introspective lyrics and jazzy, bass-heavy sound and was hailed as one of the leading lights of the burgeoning neo-soul genre, as well as her own blend of spiritualism. But while, even after all of this, Erica's identity is mostly tied to that spirituality, Kidada Jones is majorly known for her television stints and other entertainment-related endeavors. Born to an African-American father and an Ashkenazi Jew mother, Kidada Jones turned out to be a multi-talented young actress, model, and fashion designer, despite facing an identity crisis when young, being kicked out of 11 schools for not fitting in. She is the sister of Rashida Jones and Quincy Jones III. 
Born in Los Angeles and raised in Bel Air, California, Kidada and her sister were friends with Michael Jackson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Young Kidada Jones also dated Tupac Shakur back in the days when she was a teenager after his marriage with Keisha Morris was annulled. Life wasn't the same for her after he was shot when he came to pick her up. Devastated by the tragic loss of her fiancé, she had a tattoo made in his memory on her arm. However, that was not the only story that came out about her relationship with Pac and her general love life at the time. Kidada also went out with LL Cool J from 1992 to 1994, and according to him, their time together was far from regular. At the time, LL Cool J revealed a bombshell about Kadada. The information regarding Cool J and Kadada Jones holds potential intrigue within the entertainment industry. In Cool's 1998 book titled I Make My Own Rules, there is a chapter titled Evil Chemistry or possibly Sleeping with the Enemy, where it is rumored that some intriguing details might be found. According to claims, LL Cool J allegedly discovered Kadada running a black feather over his body, with Kadada displaying a deep interest in the occult. In his words, she would go to an ashram, consult a guru, and pray to statues. Before my album 14 Shots to the Dome dropped, Kidada told me she threw some kind of stick into the eternal fire for my album. He continued, I was like, yo, why did you do that? I didn't ask you to do that. That joint flopped crazily. Oh, well, I'm sorry I cared, she said. I had hurt her feelings, but she had hurt me too. I know she meant well, but I just couldn't get with that. She took me to her guru once, and I remember kneeling before this strange young woman who was touching feathers. That certainly was a mouthful, and definitely enough to scare anyone. However, Erica isn't just anyone, she's also had men singing of her tales after getting with them. There's an urban legend that my pee changes men, Badu told Rolling Stone back in 2020. The men that I fall in love with and fall in love with me change jobs and lives. A lot has been said about your bedroom, the yes. mystical powers. Yes. You came out with the... It's the urban legend. The soul singer again addressed her so-called bedroom powers during an appearance on the Tamron Hall show. The subject was brought up after the host played a clip from Vogue's Objects of Affection series, in which Badu gave an extensive tour of her home studio, aptly dubbed the Badudio. Hall said, so that's a studio slash bedroom, and I thought, of all the rooms that she would take us in, a lot has been said about your bedroom, the mystical powers. You are keenly aware of the urban legend that men can't look you in the eye without falling in love. I don't know what's happening. I'm just. How, you know. But how does that affect? Because the are you are you single now? I am. Okay. So how does it affect? You know, when a man knows I'm going to look at her and I'm never going to be able to forget her. Yeah. Women too, and children and animals, any living, breathing thing. Badu said before she was asked to describe her so-called powers. I think it's indescribable. In the bedroom, that's not where you're going to find it because my magic doesn't lie between my thighs, it lies between my ears. Badu, who was single at the time, has been romantically tied to music figures like Jay Electronica, Andre 3000, and Common. Common spoke about the Badu mythos during a 2014 sit-down with the Combat Jack show. Yeah, the Badu box is real, the rapper confessed. It can take you to another universe, but seriously, that's when you meet somebody that's really special and you're like, man, this woman got, she got something else, man. It ain't just the S, it ain't just the looks. It's like something that's kind of like spirit wise where you're like, this woman got something else. Notice how the stories that have gotten out about both women came from men they had been with. Not only that, but these men spoke about these things concerning their jobs and the music business. The fact that these men had such stories tells you that whatever Erika might be practicing, Kidada probably knows something in that line as well. And for Erika to even be scared of her, it means Kidada might be much more diabolical. All of these seem speculative, but Kidada's past makes it easy to see how even someone like Erika might be weary of the actor. For starters, you know how I mentioned that she went out with Tupac until the rapper passed earlier? Well, there are claims that she might have actually been behind the Brooklyn rapper's fall. I remember one night he was like, you know, you can date whoever you want, but you will not bring Tupac to my house. That's one rapper you will not be dating. In an earlier episode of Fat Joe's Instagram series, Keisha Cole revealed a startling narrative regarding the terrible night of Tupac's untimely demise. 
Keisha Cole had previously revealed that Tupac had stated his need to break away from Death Row Records and sign a contract with Quincy Jones Company before to his untimely murder in 1996. During a Fat Joe Instagram Live session, Cole described how MC Hammer introduced her to Death Row Records. It was then that she met the label's co-founders, Tupac and Suge Knight. It was just weird, though, because, like, the night that he was saying he wanted me to work with him when we get back to L.A., it, it seemed like he was talking. The scene was set for a momentous encounter during the weekend of Mike Tyson's infamous Vegas fight, coinciding with the tragic night of Tupac's shooting. Not only Coley, but also Kitada, who was Tupac's fiancé, as well as Coley's brother, a rapper from The Outlaws, found themselves intertwined in this tumultuous narrative while being in town. Cole recounted the intimate conversation she had with Tupac during those crucial moments. He wanted to sign me to Quincy when he was with Kadada, Quincy's daughter, she revealed, her voice filled with emotion. He was going to leave Death Row and go to sign with Quincy. He wanted me to go over there because he said that Death Row was not the place for kids. Tupac had officially announced that he was leaving Death Row to join Quincy Jones's label on the same day that he passed away. In fact, he had invited Cole to come along with him on this momentous occasion. Regretfully, Tupac was fatally shot in Las Vegas on that exact day. Nonetheless, several months before his tragic passing, there were reports that Tupac had entered into a relationship with Kidada Jones, Quincy's daughter. It was rumored that this connection was, in part, an attempt to retaliate against the music mogul for what Tupac perceived as advances towards him. Tupac Shakur and Kadada Jones's romance had an unusual beginning, full of unexpected turns and twists that ultimately resulted in an unexpected love tale. At first, it appeared that the union was motivated by a desire to disobey Kadada's father, Quincy Jones, but as time passed, a more sincere and profound bond would form between them. But he said all this kind of not very nice stuff about my dad and mixed families and mixed kids and how it's messing up America. The foundation of their bond can be traced back to a contentious interview in which Tupac Shakur openly criticized Quincy Jones for his romantic involvements, particularly focusing on his interracial relationships and the mixed race children that resulted from them. In blunt and provocative language, Shakur had even been quoted saying some deeply disturbing things about the man's involvement with young people. The media was captivated by the controversial comments, which clouded Quincy Jones's personal life and sparked a contentious discussion. Rashida Jones, the sister of Kidada Jones, joined the argument in response to Tupac's inflammatory remarks. She analyzed Shakur's moral position in a biting piece, criticizing him for what appeared to be disdain for a great person such as Quincy Jones. Rashida had a close relationship with her father, and she was adamant in her support of him. Buzz was so, you know, he's one of those really transparent people. Everything's kind of on the surface, you know, and like buzzing. And However, Destiny had its own peculiar way of choreographing unexpected encounters, as several months later, Kidada Jones and Tupac somehow found their paths converging in an intriguing twist of fate. Or maybe that's just what she wanted the world to think. I mean, the man said horrible things about her dad, and her sister hated him for it. So tell me, what do you think the chances are that she just happened to find love with that very same person right after? I'm not saying it's entirely impossible, but it does seem a little fishy to me. Maybe she had other plan, plans that played out when the rapper met his untimely demise. This theory starts to make sense when you find out that a Tupac fan once said, the night Tupac was shot in Las Vegas, his fiance Kidada Jones asked him to wear his bulletproof vest, but Pac replied, no, it'll be too hot. Still doubting that she knew something was coming? Tell us in the comment. That's it for this video. Goodbye.